Today I'm doing rotisserie prime rib. It's redemption time. Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue, Wisconsin, and welcome back to the channel. But if you're new here, we try to help you enhance and amplify your backyard barbecue fun. Now, if you haven't seen my video that I did prior to this, you know that I ran into some issues with my meter. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give it one more chance. And I had to go out in the street and pick it up, but hey, nobody ran it over. So grab your butcher knife and your spit, Jim. We're gonna amplify some backyard barbecue fun. Now, I just took it out of the cryovac and then just pat it dry with some paper towel. This is a USADA prime rib. We're not screwing around, we're getting the best. You're gonna get more flavor. There's nothing wrong with running a prime rib choice, but sometimes splurge and go for the top one that you can get. Now this part right here, you know, I always end up trimming this off. That's just a bunch of fat, but I don't throw it away. I keep it for sausage or I make some tallow out of it. And we're just gonna kinda cut right through this seam. If you follow it, and you can see, it just gives you a line just to cut down it. So we just get in here, start cutting away. Now again, some of that meat's gonna come off. That ain't that much of a waste. If you look at it, it's a big chunk of fat. You don't need to cook that. But then I just kinda start finding out where I'm at and start cutting along just to clean it up just a little. You don't have to get it all off. Now this part here is silver skin. So we wanna start exposing that meat because we want our rub to get on there. We want flavor, not just fat and some salt. So just go ahead, strike it one way, and then start leaning back and trim it the other way. In this end, be careful though, because this is your spinalis or your rib cap. So try to take just the silver skin off. Spend some time trimming and you'll be happier at the end. And when you get into this seam right here, kind of be careful because it is gonna go deep. So you don't have to take all that off. Gotta have some fat. Look at me, I'm well marbled. Now on the rib cage side, I don't do a lot. That's what I wanna leave because this is tender fat that you can eat. Right up in here, that's good, real good. But just, we're gonna trim just a little bit of this off, just a trifle. But you see right in here, oh boy, oh boy. That's marbled and that's good. All right, this is trimmed up pretty good. I like the way it looks, but I am gonna square this up just to make it look a little prettier on the rotisserie because you can see this has got a big angle. We're just gonna kinda eyeball this up and I'm gonna go ahead and cut right here. And that's a great steak for tomorrow or the next day, whatever, put it in the fridge. And because it's a little thin here, you're gonna have to be careful when you cook it and then just repeat on this side. You'll see right about here. But this does have some really nice marbling in there. That means flavor. Now I'm gonna end up smoking up a bunch of this fat and making my own beef tallow out of it, to be honest with you. That's what I have plans for it. And I gotta do a sausage video pretty soon. I keep on saying I'm gonna do one. Sorry, PS seasoning. I promise. Now I am gonna put a light little coat of avocado oil on here. I put a big sploosh right on the top of it and just kind of rub it and then flip it over and there's always enough to get the rest of it coated up. Just want something to hold and bind our seasonings to it. You know, rub your meat, but be careful, don't rub it too hard. Then after that, wanna take a little bit of kosher salt and we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit on this. Now I do the dry brine, you guys have watched. If you watched the last video, you know that's my preferred method, but because of schedule, and timing, well, I didn't have enough time to get everything done that I wanted to. So we're doing it the hurry up way. Just a good kosher salt, good layer across the top of it, because this is a big piece of meat and it can handle all of this seasoning. Trust me, it's not gonna be salty. And then today, again, I'm using the Prime Time from PS Seasoning. This stuff is magic on any prime rib. I will have a link for this in the description below also, so make sure to check it out. Do you like prime rib? It's got some good buttery flavor to it. Get the ends a little bit, and you can always roll it around on your cutting board to get a little bit of the rest of it that's fallen off. And of course, we're gonna wanna tie this up, so get some butcher twine, cut yourself off five pieces or so, and now we'll just start tying it up. Get the string underneath there, and again, I'm no butcher or any professional tire roaster, but I just go ahead, do your basic shoe knot, and I get it nice and tight, 
pinch it off, get it tight, twist it, and then throw another knot or two on top of it. Cause you're just having this hold. It's gonna shrink down a little bit, but as long as you got a little bit of bind in it and you can feel it pinching together, you'll be good. All right, that's pretty good for a little bundle of joy. Take and we'll cut these excess strings off. Don't cut them all the way tight to the knot. Now with my Lone Star Grill Santa Maria, you get a man-sized spit. You could put a whole hog on this thing if you really wanted to, for sure. You kind of want to get your claws or your ends kind of lined up first, and then we're gonna come in here and try to hit the center. So squeeze her together, kind of aim her out, and start pushing. Now when I start and get so far, I always kind of want to flip it up to make sure that I'm going through because you are a little skinnier this way. We don't want it poking out. And you'll see, here it comes. I think we hit pretty good center there. And then we want to just kind of get this clamp up in here tight. Okay, then we'll just take our claw on this side, squeeze him in too, get him in. And just tighten it. Now I'm just gonna leave this on the cutting board and let it set and sweat while I get that Santa Maria fired up. It's time for a little fire. Now that's a fire. Now I'm gonna let this fire start to ash over and then I'm gonna split it into two piles and that way we're getting a nice even cook throughout this whole spin. All right, my fire is burning right around 225 degrees. I put my hand where the meat is and count to about eight. And if it starts feeling that little bit of tingle, then I know that we're right where we wanna be. So let's get this spit mounted up and start cooking. Using my welding gloves and we're just gonna get it started on this side. And then back over here, I already have this lined up, so we're good. Now we wanna just make sure and turn it on. Make sure it's working. Oh yeah. We'll spin it. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to give this thing one more chance, but if it fails, it's going right back in that same spot. And I'll maybe give you the GPS coordinates so you can have it yourself. And we'll place that in now. Gonna run it right up to about here, place that straight in right about here, and we're gonna leave this on this side. And I'm going analog old school, so I don't end up overcooking this big old beautiful piece of prime rib. I cooked for over 20 years using these things. We can go back to good old faithful. I'm gonna get this one, and we're gonna go right up and through here just to give us a measurement in the center. And I'm gonna go right here for right now, and we'll just adjust this throughout the cook. Turn our power back on, and we're gonna spin it for about a half an hour, and then I'm gonna double check those probes. I'll bring you back when we go ahead and start sticking our MK4 into that big old hunk of love. I'm a half an hour into this cook, let's check these temperatures real quick. And we'll just spin it up here a little bit, and we'll try right here, get into the bar and pull it back a little bit. Yeah. 54, 53 degrees, get her back on, and then we're just gonna let it keep on spinning. And I checked my old analog probes and they're reading right around 50 to 60 degrees also, so I think we're doing pretty good here. Now my target temp is about 125 degrees, and letting it rest for about 30 minutes, that should bring us up to that 130, 132 degrees, which is my preferred doneness temp. And I am trying to get this to be wall-to-wall -wall pink. It might not do it because it's rotisserie and it's turning and it's a little bit up and down fluctuation in temperatures but that is our goal we'll see but it certainly is getting a good smoky color and the fat is starting to render a little bit and i'm also going to be doing my garlic and butter sauce and i'll bring you back when we reach that internal temperature of 100 degrees i'm two hours into this prime rib cook and it's looking pretty dang good all three of my probes are reading 100 degrees so maybe that meter is working and now is the perfect time to start up our garlic butter sauce. We're gonna start off by just putting a cast iron pan on the Santa Maria. Now I put the grates back down, so let's just get that on here first. Now we're gonna use some fresh thyme. Pull out a few of these twigs, and you wanna start pulling the thyme down the stem and get it off. Don't go up, because it just breaks it off. Now this obviously takes time. Get it? Time. Watch out when you're doing it, but you're just trying to get this chopped into a little bit of freshness is all we're really looking for. And we also want to get in some fresh rosemary. Same thing, just start at the top of the stem and start working your way down. Chop this, we don't have to get crazy. 
This is just gonna be brushed on. If I could just do the like Japanese style, like Kung Fu style or something. Wish I would have joined karate. I think I'd have been better at this. First thing I'm gonna throw in is this good Kerry Gold butter. Lots of flavor on it for sure. All right, we'll plop that piece in. Ah, get off from there. What are you doing? Meow. Now put in our herbs, get them in here. I got some minced garlic we're gonna get in here. Same thing, ploppity plop. It's good. And now I'm just gonna take a big spoon and we're gonna start stirring it up. Chopping into this cold butter and start just mixing it around. We wanna get this all spread out. Just get it mixed up good. And this will slowly start to melt. I mean, look at how much it's melted already. And now I'm gonna show you how I've been stoking up this fire. It's pretty simple. On the back side of the pit, I'll put a bigger stick every single time I stoke it up. Then I'll take and put a little bit of charcoal in here. And we're just gonna put a small little stick right here. And then I'm just gonna put just a couple of the B&B &B charcoals in between those two. Then once this butter is all melted, then we'll start brushing it on. And I like to do that every 15 minutes so that way I know for sure that this prime rib is completely coated with that awesome garlic butter sauce. If you've never tried this, do it and let me know in the comments below because man almighty, this is great. And all my Patreons, I know that you're doing it for sure. I'm reading 125 degrees internal temperature. Let's go ahead and just check and see how this is doing. And we're probably gonna end up pulling this off. Shut her down and grab her thermal works. All right, so let's check and see what we got. Yeah, 126 right there. 127 and we'll rotate it right to about here and we'll check and see what it says here. Yeah, 125, so 124, it's time to pull it off. Pull out these two analog life-saving probes. Grab our spit and get that off. Smells delicious, I can smell that garlic, butter, and rosemary and thyme on this thing. Perfect, let's get it on the cutting board and let it rest. Get it right here. Get this first one unhooked a little bit. Get our meter out that didn't really fail. Loosen this side. And we're just gonna start pulling him right out. Get this claw and pull him out first. And now this one. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and tent it loosely with a little bit of aluminum foil. Just like that. And now I'm gonna let it rest for a half an hour and then we'll come out and we'll slice into it. I can't cut it all up because I'm going to a party. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Redemption. This prime rib is rested for 30 minutes and if you can see right here, we're reading 132 degrees internal temperature. And I can honestly say that's great. So I'm right in that medium rare in the center. But let's go ahead and see what it looks like inside. Start cutting these strings off. The last one, well, somebody was pissed off and just went ahead and left them on and cut into it. Of course, you know, it's Memorial Day weekend and we've got a five alarm fire or something. Every Ranger Rick is out there blowing every horn they got. Now it's the moment of truth. Did I redeem myself? Let's go ahead and cut into this. Now you can obviously see by my cutting board, she's a stuck pig. Oh yeah, I can see already. Wow! That is pretty. Now before I slice off a piece and try it out, because I am in a little bit of hurry, I still want to give a big shout out to all my Patreons and all the people that have joined the Dead Broke Barbecue Nation. And don't forget about our Facebook group because over there, you can share some of your cooks with all of us. Let's go ahead, cut off a slice. Yeah, right about there. Plop. <laughs> That's a redemption, people. I hate to tell you, but that is a true redemption. Now, we'll slice it here. Look at this, the wall-to-wall -wall pink, juicy, crazy moisture in it. Gotta cut off some of that spinalis. Get that little hunk of love right here. Happy Memorial Day to all of you, and thank you to all the people that have served this great, wonderful country. I and all the viewers that are watching appreciate it. <laughs> oh.
Oh yeah. Somebody crushed a cook. Perfect. Now honestly, the last rotisserie cook, it wasn't that big of a fail. But I was disappointed because I didn't get this. And the meter, it ran pretty dang good today. So maybe it's actually batting 500. Now I gotta try my horsey sauce because it isn't prime rib without a little bit of Canadian geese, fire trucks, loud kids, cars. God, what is it, Memorial Day weekend? <laughs> so tender, packed with flavor. Buy a prime, buy a prime rib when you're gonna do prime rib. You'll thank me for it. All right, it's time for me to get this packed up and head off to the party. We'll see you soon, Jake. Roll the nation. And that is my done preferred temperature. You can really taste it. So tender. Yeah. It's cooked perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. All right, we gotta get a we gotta get a pan. We gotta get this in here. Get it covered with foil. Yeah, on the live stream. Yeah. All right, we'll get this. Like crazy, I was like, he talks like this when he's drunk. And then, and then, like about ten seconds, he said, "Yeah, I got a loose lip when I'm drinking." <laughs> Yeah, make sure you check out our show on Sunday nights.